everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and this is one I have been waiting for ever since I did my Kickstarter preview. It was my number one most anticipated Kickstarter of 2020 from last year. We're talking about Bullet Baby. So this is from Level 99 Games, and thank you to them for sending me a copy. And today I'm going to show you a full solo playthrough of my heroine against a boss. I picked a hard character, we'll see if I can survive. I have a separate review video that went up at the same time as this playthrough, so check that out if you want to hear if the game met my high expectations. And a quick question to those in the comments, this is a competitive, solo, or cooperative spatial kind of puzzle game. So what's your favorite spatial game where you're doing polyominoes or moving things around? What hits it for you? But like always, I'm going to start with a quick overview of the game and how it plays and then get into the full playthrough. Feel free to use the timestamps to skip through any of that. And if you like the content here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please join the conversation on our Discord, listen to our weekly podcast, check out our streaming channel for extra content, and please consider supporting our Patreon for early access to our videos and other fun perks. So the basic idea of Bull is that you're trying to survive bullets raining down on you as long as you can. And how that works is you have these bullet tokens in a bag. Again, this is the deluxe version of the game with wooden tokens. And each bullet shows one of five colors with a matching background symbol, in this case kind of pinkish purplish, and a value from one through four. And you find the matching column, in this case this one, and you move the bullet down its value of empty spaces. So one, two, boom, that's where it would stay. And then we get a one, two, three green. And here we go, I was waiting for one that had the uh, same color. So again, it's open spaces. So this would go one, two, three, skipping the filled space where the two is entirely. And that's also how you're going to die because if a bullet would ever have to go all the way down where these arrows are, it jumps on over to your hearts. And if both of those get covered, you are done. And by the way, usually this would be in the middle and this would be on the right, but I have the boss board I'm gonna be fighting a little bit further to the right. And I thought it might be useful to see my bullet board while I'm referring to the boss. But of course it's kind of boring to just be shot at. So every one of the heroines has a unique mix of abilities that use their action points. They start each round with seven and the cost of a given action is in the upper left. So here for Ryakagi, she can move a bullet left, right, or down one space for a single action point. And bullets cannot be moved onto spaces with other bullets, but you can spend more than one point at a time. So like if I want to get this green three over to here, I could spend two points to do so. Ryu can also spend two action points to draw a new pattern card. We'll get to those in a second. And for one action point, she can reveal two bullets from her bag she's drawing from, place one of them, and return the other. So it gives her a little bit more control over what order things come out in. And then finally, totally unique to her, she can spend five action points to just totally heal herself one damage. Now this might sound pretty good, but trust me, Re is a hard level character for a reason. I'm expecting to get my butt kicked here. And I mentioned pattern cards. At the beginning of each round, you draw until you have three of them from your character's unique deck. And they each tell you some bullets that have to be in the pattern, in this case, a red and a blue side by side. And then they'll show one or more of these little explosion spaces, which means you remove bullets in those spaces, but they don't have to be there. So for example, this alignment of bullets would match this because I still have the red and blue, even though I don't have anything here. I could play this card discarding it to clear both of these bullets, which were both on the little explosion spaces. Now what you do with cleared bullets differs depending on which mode of the game you're playing, but I'm playing the boss mode. I'm going against Hell on Wheels, this uh, poltergeist little girl coming after me. So in this case, my cleared bullets go up here in her incoming area, although in this case, I'm just gonna put them here to make them a little bit more visible. And basically I'm building up bullets here until I reach a certain value. It's five with one player for Hell on Wheels. And whenever I do that, I'm going to break one of her shields. If I can break all five of the boss's shields before I am defeated, I win the game. But what happens after my turn is done is first the boss activates their pattern effect. So they'll have one active pattern at a time. And it's kind of like my patterns, except I want to actually keep these bullets in this configuration. So in this case, if I don't have four bullets in a vertical column, Wake the Dead will activate and I'll have to move all of my bullets up one space, which might not sound that dangerous, but Hell on Wheels special ability Fright Night means that if she moves bullets off my left, right, or up side of my board, they hit me and I take them as damage. Yikes. So first the boss activates their pattern, then they check if shields are broken, then I draw intensity, and then they reveal a new pattern. And that drawing intensity refers to the value the boss has, and I do it for the lowest broken shield, so like here would be eight. That's how many chips I take from this big central bag and add it to my smaller current bag. And that's how many bullets I'll have to survive in the coming round. 
And it's worth noting that some shields will have special abilities when you break them. For Hell on Wheels, uh, when I break her third one, she'll move all bullets up one space, all bullets to the right one space when I break the fourth one, and the final one, all bullets down one space, trying to finish me off because I have to survive all of her effects before I actually win. Oh, and just to mention, Re, my character has a special power as well. Each of her pattern cards features a symbol in the upper left, and whichever card is topmost on my discard pile, so I have to have actually played them, I basically become immune to bullets of that color. So if they would hit me, they get cleared and hit the boss instead. But with those details out of the way, let's see how long I can survive. All right, sorry, Rhea, I'm gonna cover up your great art with my card so I can see them. Ooh, this is very interesting. So Buster Knuckle, these are blank spaces, which means I can discard up to three bullets on the left side if I have two spaces with no bullets on them. That is a perfect pairing with Arm Bazooka, which I can activate when I have bullets on the left but not on the right. So I could do Arm Bazooka and then Buster Knuckle and just clear out the two I used. But I start with 10 bullets in my current bag, and generally speaking, I like to draw several of them before I start making any decisions about what I want to do. So two green, three yellow, and I forgot to mention that if you clear bullets with a star, you gain whatever your character's star effects are, so in this case, I'll get an extra action point back, so it's better to clear those. Okay, two pink, nice, I already got a little bit of a line going. Two red, perfect. Okay, a four pink, four is the highest value you can draw. And that does mean something that's always important to remember. If you have three bullets in a single column, a four of that color will hit you. So you want to be careful the second you get three in a column. But for now, we can keep on going. A four blue. We remain safe. A one yellow. Wow, okay. <laughs> okay, so now red is potentially bad. I have a single bullet left in my current. Ooh, and I'm looking at Slugfest. I need to have a bullet with specifically a value of one and then one with specifically a value of two and then I could shoot up three bullets elsewhere. So the one and the two here would help me. I could like move over the three star and the four that would cost a lot of action points. And let's not forget Wake the Dead wants to punish me if I don't have a nice column. So it seems like it might make sense to set that up but not actually trigger it this round. So sure, let's go ahead and do that. So one, two, three, and one more. Let's move three. And I have three action points left. What do I want to do with them? Oh, I forgot, I haven't drawn my last bullet yet. So hold on, let's not uh, do that yet because I might die. Let's instead, for safety's sake, move this over one before I draw. Okay, and I was fine. I got a two blue. Ooh, and that's even better. That's even better. Because I'll still do the one, two, three, and then uh, one and one. That leaves me with only one action point left. But now, not only am I ready to hit her with a slugfest really hard next turn, but then I've got almost a perfect arm bazooka shot set up as well. Although, wait, the only thing I want to hang on to to prevent her awake the dead attack is uh, this column. So let's use my last action point to do that. And then I'll go ahead and play Arm Bazooka. I've got a red and a blue, so I'm clearing these three. Because that way I get to draw a replacement card at the beginning of next round. That does mean blue is on top of my discard pile. Let's see, what's an easy way to kind of show that? There we go, beautiful. So if she somehow hit me with a blue, I would be safe. But my bag is empty. I'm out of action points, so let's stop there for now. So first we check Wake the Dead. I do have four bullets in a column, so it does not trigger its ability. Then we check if I broke a shield, I have three bullets, I need five. And by the way, important strategy note, when you break a shield, if you have any extra bullets, they get discarded, unless you can break another shield. So you can break like two or three or four all at once. So that means ideally next round, I either want to hit her with just two bullets, or all the way with seven more to get to that five twice and really smash her. Oh, wait, what will this do? Move all bullets left one. I'll have to remember that's there if I do <laughs> hit her that hard. All right, and she reveals a new pattern. Oh my gosh, that is a tough one. And I have to move bullets left two spaces if I don't clear it. And then the shield will move another one. That would be a devastating one-two punch. But for now, she's only sending seven bullets to my current, so not too bad. All right, coming back to me, I'm getting a third card again. That is up. Oh, Asteroid Bell is interesting. If I have five bullets that are all full, uh, then I can destroy the three rightmost. That's why there's a circle and an explosion. But before I start drawing anything, let's go ahead and trigger Slug Fest. Although, ooh, wait, I'm gonna get a star from that. So you know what? Let's go ahead and use her uh, one ability to reveal two bullets and then place one of them. Hopefully they're not both red. All right, one yellow or a one green star. Ooh, the one green star is perfect to do my buster knuckle. So let's put it right there and we'll put that back in the bag. And now I'll trigger Slug Fest, a one and a two. So boom, boom, boom. The star on the yellow gets me to seven. That means now green I'm protected from. So I've now hit her with six. That'll definitely break her first shield. The question is, can I get to four more? I guess we'll see. Well, I guess Asteroid Belt and Buster Knuckle would combo pretty well together, so I might be able to get to uh, where I can hit her again. 
But now let's start uh, drawing stuff and see where we are. And let's not forget that stuff is going to be going left, generally speaking, which is not great for us. Gosh, a four red? Huh. Yeah, let's uh, scooch that over a bit. <laughs> oh, a one red? What the heck? Well, we're protected from green at the moment, so... Oh, gosh, I was using all my stuff, but let's scooch it over too. Hope we draw some more green. Red three? Oh my god, wow. Glad I'm moving these. All right, chance of getting another red four really low. I'm going to take my chances. Okay, a yellow one. That's a little better. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do asteroid belt because she has no way to move tokens up. So let's draw again. A green two. Okay. And a pink one. Okay, that's that's good. That's good, right? Okay, let's see how this would play out. Hmm. So if I move one, two, three down, I'll have one AP left. Then I can play Asteroid, Belt, I'll break three of those, get a star, I'll be one away from breaking her shield. And then I can play Buster Knuckle, I'll break both of those, so the entire row will be gone. And ooh, Buster Knuckle has red, this is gonna be great! Oh, because pretty much all that'll remain to be pushed to the left will be red chips! Oh, you're going down, boss! I might even hit her three times, <laughs> this is ridiculous! All right, you know what, I'm not even gonna look anymore, I think this is just gonna be amazing, so I'm gonna go one, two, three. So we're down to one AP. And I'm doing Asteroid Belt, all five of these are filled, so one, two, three, the star gives me an AP. Boom, I'm immune to pink. And then Buster Knuckle, two more. Because again, all it cares about are the two rightmost spaces being free of bullets. So now I'm immune to red. And then again, she's gonna be sending stuff way to the left, so that green is a liability. Let's move that over. Actually, I haven't done the math yet, but if I break three, what's the next? Move all bullets up one, that won't hurt me. Yes, with my last AP, uh, I'm actually just not going to use it. We'll see how things go. All right, so if I calculate it right, this should be insane. <laughs> so first she resolves her Banshee Whale, which is going to move all the bullets two spaces to the left. So that hits me, and that hits me, and that hits me. And that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. But her nice try ability, the top discard shows red. So all three of these go away from me, and boom, 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 hit her. Did I get to 15? Probably not, right? I've got five, uh, 10, oh, 14! Oh my gosh, I should have moved the red over one. Well, if I'd planned better, I would have, but it's okay. So we do have enough to break two shields, but unfortunately the other four bullets just get cleared back to the central bag. And we do move all bullets left one, and this is after all the bullets have been cleared, so the one red that drops off that I'm still immune to is going to stay on her. And that was insane. I don't think I've ever had a turd <laughs> that good in this game. Because, look, my entire thing is cleared. I mean, wow. All right, she does flip up a new pattern. Gosh, another really tough one to do. Bullets move right two spaces. I might just have to uh, deal with it. And if I break her shield, which will take four more hits, they'll all move up one again. That's not too bad. But I've got eight bullets incoming. All right, I did every pattern I had. So ultimate grand slam, curveball, and moonshot. That's one nice thing about Ree. Her patterns are really simple, at least. So jump scare is gonna push stuff to the right, which currently is not dangerous at all. Until I do a new pattern, red is still my safe spot. Let's start drawing some. It looks like it's all columns, baby. Okay, one green, all right. And a four pink. And a three green. Ah, columns are looking a little bit tougher to do right now. Oh, one pink, that's good, I like that. Two blue, no danger yet. I got almost all of them out as well. A one yellow, okay. A one red, jeez, I only have one bullet left. I'm gonna be totally safe to get them all out. And another one pink. All right, so let's see. I'm clearly not gonna block her attack this turn, which means she'll slide all bullets to the right. So if I can like use these two and all three of these and somehow clear them with uh, some of these attacks and that'll protect me some. But I don't know how possible that'll be because they kind of all do the same thing. Let's see, if I move the green three over here, that would set up ultimate grand slam. So that's three moves, and I can move the yellow here to clear it as well, but that's six moves. I would have just two AP after clearing that star. I actually still wouldn't break her shield. Maybe I don't want to because I'm going to be in a bad way. Wait, it seems to make more sense to move everything to the left, right? So that jump scare won't kill me. Although I shouldn't forget, I could just block the jump scare. I mean, if I move that down and that down, I've got the four. And then I need to get something over to there. Well, let's see, if I go one, two, three... That would set up Ultimate Grand Slam. Then I could go one, two, three. But yeah, then I'm gonna go ahead and do it, which does make me uh, free from pink, which is gonna be important in a second. I hit her with one star, so I'm back up to two AP. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's gonna move everything to the right, which will make the pink hit her and break her shield, but the green will hit me. I can deal with one hit, but then breaking the shield will push them all up one. So I guess I gotta go 
like that, as dumb as it is. <laughs> and yeah, it's gonna be not a great round. Because we look at her pattern, jump scare, we didn't do it, so these move right off. Uh, that one hits her because of my ability, but this one hits me, I'm half dead. And all those pop way over. And I do have exactly five, though, so I break another one of her shields, and she moves all my bullets up one. Yikes. And what's her new pattern? Localized Flash Flood. That looks like an easier shape to get. Otherwise, all bullets move down two spaces. Oh, my lord. And then this moves all bullets to the right if I break it. Okay. And she's got nine bullets coming at me this time. And, oh, gosh, I got another vertical pattern. Oh, wait, do blow out a moonshot go? No, they're like exact opposites. Ah, oh, it's a waste. Well, either way, let's start drawing some and see what happens. Okay, three yellow. That's not great. Well, let's see. I guess I can clear some stuff and then make myself immune to yellow. So, sure, let's start off aggressively. One, two, three. I'll move away from the right since our next shield will move stuff to the right. Then I'll use Curve Ball. So yellow's my safety now. And all three of those are gone. All right, three blue. Four blue, okay. Three green, that's fine. Come on, show me some yellows. A one blue, ah, darn it. I'm just gonna take my chance that I'm not gonna get another four blue. Okay, one green. Oh man, I got two problem columns now. Let's live dangerously. A two green. I wish that my uh, pattern made green safe. Now the good thing is I am close to triggering one of these. I could move the blue over and do a uh, blowout. So I could go like one, two, and then move the three over. Let's do it, let's do it. But you know what, I think I am actually gonna do blowout and get rid of these three because then I'll still have the localized flash flood already defended, yeah. All right, so here we go. Red is my defense again. And I did get one star, so I'm back to two AP. And wait, I'm gonna break her shield. That'll move everything right. That's okay, I'm defending against the localized flash flood. I wanna get another green. Could use one of my AP to make sure. Yeah, you know what, let's go ahead and do it. I wanna know what both of these are. <laughs> so four pink is fine. Oh wait, no, it's not. I need to use my last AP to move it. And then the one yellow is fine, okay. So it doesn't really matter what order I draw them in. But since everything's gonna go to the right when I break her shield, let's use my last AP to do that. Boom. All right, that was not too bad. First we check her pattern. I did indeed form it, so I don't move anything down. And I did break her second to last shield, so all of my bullets are going to move to the right one space. We are almost there, we are almost there. We just gotta hit one more shield and then survive until the end of the round. Move all bullets down, of course it would be that. <laughs> and let's see what her pattern is. Headbanger, move all bullets down two spaces. Oh my gosh. So if I didn't block that and I broke her shield, everything would move down three and I would certainly be dead. But I'm not dead yet, seven AP. And finally I get some horizontal ones. Okay, nice little mix here. And I'm getting 10 bullets to my current. I don't know if I should try to defeat her this round or just uh, play a little safer. I'd love to get rid of some of these right now because I'm already in a dangerous position. Let's see, moonshot, moonshot. You do that and that, but man, the next one would be expensive. You know, let's uh, let's do the little draw two pick one thing and see if we can get something that'll go into one of those columns. A red four or a pink three. That's perfect. Thank you very much. This goes back. Okay, here we go. So one, two, three more AP. Although you know, I don't think I can defeat her this round because those would all move down. But I'll go and do the moon shot. It'll get me one AP back. So now I need two more bullets to defeat her, but it'll defeat me too. And blue is safe. Oh man, this feels like a bad idea. Okay, one pink, that's fine. I might wanna move some of those, but I don't know if I'll have enough stuff. Two green, okay. Four red. Two blue, okay, come on, come on. One green, huh. All right, let's see, it wouldn't be too tough for me to get a headbanger defended. I would just have to move some of these over. But I don't think I want to break her shield this round because I can't survive all bullets moving down one. I mean, unless I spend two AP to draw a pattern card, happen to get a pink defense. <laughs> that's a lot of ifs. I don't think that would work. All right, let's draw a few more. Okay, two yellow. That's a pretty dangerous column there. Hmm, let's see. If I got this yellow out of the way, I could do double header and it would get me two AP. And I'd still have the bullets I need to uh, match her attack if I just move these over. But again, double header is not going to save me from this three blowing up on me. Ooh, can I get up to five AP to clear a bullet from my life? That would hit her for one, and then I'd be able to take the damage from pink. Oh, that'd be great. But not if I have enough AP. Okay, so I move the yellow down. That would get me down to two, and then double header would clear me two back. It'd only be at four, and I'd still need to move some more to get the headbanger defense to activate. I could do rain check instead. That would get me up to five AP, because it would clear that and that. 
But then I'd still need one AP to move one of these over for the headbanger. And all this is assuming I just don't die. You know what, I just think I need to draw a few more. Okay, three blue, oh my gosh. I got two bullets left, oh, but yellow will just totally kill me. All right, let's draw one more. Okay, one green. Oh my gosh. I don't know if there's any way for me to do this. Okay, last bullet. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I was literally thinking if I drew a two red, I win this turn. And then I did it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> All right. So how's it going to work? Rain check, baby. I totally should have died there drawing just when I had this huge column, but nope. So rain check. I've got bullets here and here. I clear that for one AP, that for two AP, that for three. I have one more than I need to defeat the boss. That gets me up to six AP. And with that six, uh, yes, yes, yes. Number one, spending five, I am no longer injured. We'll shoot that at the boss too, take it. And then here's the piece de resistance. I've got one more AP, blink, headbanger, defended. So we go over to her, her attack does not hit. She does take at least five damage. And what, move all bullets down one? Boop, it's jumping over at me. But it is only one bullet and you needed two, sir. So wow, 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 that was <laughs> an awesome, awesome game. I'm so happy I got that on camera. So that was Bullet from Level 99 Games. This is, again, the core deluxe set with the wooden tokens. And once again, if you want to hear my review of the game, spoiler, it's really good, uh, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.